Has the CIA become a secret army? A killing machine? You're sitting there in the middle of nowhere in Nevada, and you're looking at a screen that is televising what looks for all the world like a big video game. And push a button, and a pickup truck explodes in Afghanistan, half a world away. I mean, if they're bad guys and they're doing us harm, I have no problem with that. Now the dark side. You, know, you can't be perfect. There is collateral damage. We, we feed the jihadi recruitment video that you know, these Americans are heartless killers. That was a look at the new Showtime documentary, The Spy Master, CIA and the Crosshairs, which is an unprecedented inside look at America's spy agency. Joining us now, the film's director, Jules Noday, and the writer and executive producer, Chris Whipple. Good to have you both. So you guys had the 12 living uh, CIA riveting. directors. Who's the hardest riveting. to get in front of the camera? Yeah. George, George Tenet, without a doubt. You know, <laughs> the first interview, back. we were lucky to get George H.W. Bush as right. our first mm -hmm. interview. And that helps. He, and he is passionate about the CIA and the CIA employees. And, and so... Tennant was the last holdout. He hasn't really talked about this in eight years. Right. Uh, he's a larger-than-life, fascinating character. And imagine if if you had on your watch, if you warned about 9/11. Right. You had the attacks of 9/11. You had the enhanced interrogation program. Right. And then you had weapons of mass destruction all on your watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, unbelievable. Make you a little. And, and and what we've heard time and time again is that 9/11 was a failure of intelligence. You guys blow that theory out of the water. There is a July, I believe it's a yeah, July 10th, 2001 meeting where the head of the Al Qaeda unit, uh, Richard Blee, comes in and says that the roof has just fallen in. They're coming to get us, and a lot of Americans are going to die. Three months before 9/11. Jeez. It's a it's a <laughs> chilling picture that George Tennant and Kofor Black, the head of the Counterterrorism Center, paint of those months. And inexplicably, the July 10 meeting is not even mentioned by the 9/11 Commission, even though Tennant testified about it behind closed doors. But at that point, Richard Blee came in, the head of the Al Qaeda unit, said the roof is falling in. George Tennant picks up the phone to the White House. They go to see Condoleezza Rice. Uh, they lay out all the intelligence that pointing to imminent attacks spectacular attacks. They could be here in the U.S. And Kofor Black pounded his fist on the table and said, we have to go on a war footing now. And listen to this quote. It's very evident. We're going to be struck. We're going to be struck hard. And lots of Americans are going to die. Well, it's, you know, it's, it, what was fascinating about doing this program is, you know, whenever you do a documentary, especially with people who are, normally don't speak and talk about not speaking, this is the CIA we're talking about. That's secrets are their business but to be able to have all of them and to have a candid assessment of their spice program the drones the interrogation their um and by the way the sharp divide but that's there, and that's what people don't part. understand about the cia yeah. is they are as divided as americans on drones on enhanced interrogation mm -hmm. techniques that all comes out in this movie but that's the beauty of it you know the cia is seen it's general hayden who says you know kind of a bipolar uh, way to we look at it it's either the public thinks it's jack bauer or it's jack the ripper right but uh, the matter of fact is, you know, these are real human beings who are making incredible, uh, difficult decisions. S you know, we might agree or disagree on them, but what is great is we get to see them explain their reasoning and try to... Wow, uh, that's incredible. What yeah. was the most provocative, visceral reaction yeah. you got from any of the directors or, or, or perhaps... Well, what shocked you the most? <laughs> I, I think it was shocking to learn that the CIA director makes life and death decisions almost every day. Now, Leon Panetta told, tells us this riveting account of how he was at the funeral of a CIA, CIA officer in Arlington, and he gets the call that they have in the crosshairs of a drone over Pakistan, a major terrorist, but there are women and children in the shot, yep. as he put it. Yep. Leon, a devout Catholic, a former older boy, always carries his rosary beads. He agonizes over whether to pull the trigger. He calls the White House and they say, it's all on you, Leon. Oh, 
Jeez, thanks. Thanks, <laughs> thanks a lot. He says, thanks a lot. i got to say my Hail Marys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we watch him as he makes this agonizing decision. To, and and it's, it's, it's fascinating to see these. I mean, every act of the film is really an ethical dilemma yeah. for, for every CIA director. Did you have preconceived notions about the CIA? And did anything change for you after? This remarkable experience. Oh, it sounds oh like. yes. I, I, I think I was um, like most of the um, the public. I, you know, I had my own pie pole of view. You know, you only hear. That's the thing about the CIA. You only hear about the the mistakes. You never hear about the yeah. successes. And so to discover, I think the humanity, especially, but to not only of the directors but of their top operatives like Jose Rodriguez or Kofa Black who are head of the counterterrorism center but Gina Bennett this yeah. amazing analyst right. a woman among all these men who you know uh, was working in the Bin Laden cell and to see the dedication I think they're all you know yeah. we've asked the directors they feel a little bit like uh, Saul Berenson in, in Homeland <laughs> and said yeah maybe there is a little bit uh, in all of us but there is a little bit of carry without the you know right. promiscuous and the drinking and all that but that kind of addicting quality of that they have of their work yeah the passion is is was very revealing for me. Before we go, here's how former CIA director Leon Panetta reacted to a hypothetical about whether he would ever use torture as an interrogation tactic. The reality is you have to look at it in context. I mean, if, if in fact you had uh, a credible intelligence that there was a nuclear weapon planted someplace in New York City or Washington, D.C., and there was one person that would know where that bomb was located, uh, it'd be very tough uh, not to resort to every method possible in order to get that information. And, and wow. there's a divide willing to do it in 2002, right after 9-11, not willing to do it in 2014. Here we are in 2015. This is suddenly extraordinarily timely because the, you can feel the scales tipping back towards possibly in enhanced interrogation uh, techniques? Absolutely, and the directors are bitterly divided on, on that subject. But, uh, but, but news for Donald Trump uh, is that I think every director to a person would say, we're not going to go down that road and waterboard anybody again. Mike right. Hayden says, if a president, a future president wants to order us to waterboard someone, he better bring his own bucket because that's not, <laughs> that's that's not going to happen again. The right. Spy Master, CIA in the this Crosshairs, great, premieres this Saturday at 9 p.m. on Showtime. Jules wow. Nuday and Chris Whipple, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations. Thank uh, you for having us. Up next, um, Whitney Houston probably said it best. I believe the children are the future. A new report takes a look at what cities around the world are doing to help the next generation get ahead. We'll be right back. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.